Hello, my name is Joe Beer, and I'm with Beer Meters. And today we're going to demonstrate our DCI 100, a DC powered, de energized secondary and primary identification tool. The DCI 100 is an industrial battery powered platform direct current pulsing tool. What makes the DCI 100 unique from other similar type devices? is the DCI-100 is impervious to stray or an induced neutral current. In this training video, we will review the DCI-100 itself, the available pulse receiving devices, and the four most common applications the DCI-100 is used for. On the front of the DCI-100 is an on-off power selector switch. Inline fuses for the red and black conductor a green LED power light to let the operator know if the batteries are operational, a red LED low battery light to let the operator know if the batteries are below operating capacity, a blue LED pulse light to let the operator know the DCI 100 is functional, a green LED short light to let the operator know that the connected circuit has continuity, and a red LED open light to let the operator know that the connected circuit does not have continuity. The DCI-100 we are demonstrating in this video incorporates Milwaukee batteries. Other battery manufacturers can be used upon request as long as 18 volt batteries are available. Before you insert any brand name battery into the DCI-100, always check them for charge. Bira recommends at least one bar of charge on the digital scale for the unit to remain operational. The battery bases are located on each side of the DCI-100. Using a Milwaukee battery, slide the battery into the base until a click is heard for a secure connection. And to remove the battery, simply squeeze the tabs located on each side of the battery and pull. The DCI-100 comes equipped with a red and black conductor. Each conductor has an alligator clamp for secure connections on most any type contact point. If necessary, beer can accommodate almost any type of custom connector. The DCI-100 also has a CT receptacle. Using this function is only necessary if the circuit being tested has a known stray current present. If used, make sure the CT plug is aligned correctly using the built-in guide located on the plug and the receptacle. To remove the CT, simply push down on the tab located on top of the plug. There are three receivers which can be used with the DCI-100. The STRCV is for secondary only identification. The ACDM can be used on secondary and primary identification, and the DAVR, which can also be used on secondary and primary identification. Built into the STRCV is a CT receptacle. Using the CT with the STRCV is usually only done for two reasons. One, if the secondary cable is 250 MCM or larger, and two, if there is a weak signal due to length, age, or junctions. Notice the STRCV indicator LEDs. The center white LED lets the operator know the unit's internal battery is in good condition and the unit is ready for operation. The yellow LEDs are the directional pulse indicators. Either will flash when the DCI-100 sends a pulse onto the conductor. The back of the STRCV has a five position selector switch. Here, the operator can select the sensitivity based on high current, medium current, or low current to detect the DCI-100 pulse. There's also a test position to test the LED indicators on the front of the meter. The ACDM, which stands for Analog Current Deflection Meter, is a polarity sensitive meter. Depending on which conductor, red or black, the operator attaches to for testing will determine which direction the needle deflects for positive visual identification. 
Located on the side of the ACDM is the CT receptacle. Also located on the side is a 10 turn sensitivity potentiometer. Vera highly recommends the operator always begin testing in the zero position. The DAVR, which stands for Digital Audio Visual Receiver, is a horn and light device so the operator can achieve two forms of positive identification. Also located on the front is the 10 turd sensitivity potentiometer. Again, Vera highly recommends the operator always begin testing in the zero position. Located on the end of the DAVR is the CT receptacle. Built into the rubber housing protector is a self-supporting leg for hands-free operation on the ground, cabinets, or any smooth and most uneven surfaces. To access the battery inside the DAVR, simply remove the rubber protector and slide the battery compartment open to expose the battery. Always remember to reinstall the rubber protector after installing a new battery. It dramatically increases the life of the DAVR. Our first demonstration will be positively identifying de-energized secondary cables from a meter base to a single phase pad mount transformer. After a self test is performed on each battery, attach them to the DCI 100. Also attach the red and black conductors as preferred. In this demonstration, I have the red attached to one hot leg and the black attached to the neutral. Turn the unit on to verify that all the correct LEDs are functioning properly. Notice from our demonstration, the green power and the green short LEDs are on continuous while the blue pulse LED is pulsing on and off. This is a good functional circuit. Now identifying the de-energized conductors in the pad mount transformer can begin. To determine which hot secondary bushing the red conductor from the DCI-100 is attached to, turn the STRCV to the high switch position and rest the end of the probe tip perpendicular to the bushing as seen in the demonstration. The STRCV will emit an audible tone and a directional light based on the conductor color. Notice how the yellow LED with the directional arrow pointing into the pad mount transformer or away from the DCI-100 correctly represents the red conductor. If the conductor colors were reversed and the black was attached to the same conductor, the yellow LED directional arrow pointing away from the pad mount transformer or towards the DCI-100 would be pulsing on and off. Since we know the de-energized hot leg conductor is located on the far left bushing, we can begin testing each conductor with a perpendicular approach as seen in the demonstration. Again, we need a positive identification from the tone and directional LED. Now we will positively identify the same de-energized hot leg conductor using the ACDM and CT. Notice the arrow on the CT and the label ground sender. Notice how the word sender is in the correct direction of the DCI 100. This should indicate a green needle deflection using the red conductor from the DCI 100. Attaching the CT in the same orientation to the neutral conductor will indicate a red needle deflection using the black conductor from the DCI-100. The second demonstration, as seen from the wiring diagram, will involve a single de-energized primary conductor. The circuit requires the DCI-100 attached on the near end to the center conductor using a feed-through bushing and a special elbow adapter for the DCI-100. The far end center conductor is attached to ground also using a feed-through bushing and a bearer elbow ground assembly.
With the batteries verified as good and the correct connections made with the DCI-100, we can turn the DCI-100 on and check or adjust the sensitivity on the ACDM receiver. Again, notice the arrow on the CT around the red conductor and the word sender towards the DCI-100. We should expect the ACDM to indicate a green needle deflection. If we move to the middle or some location between both ends of the circuit, such as a manhole or hole dug in the ground, we can find the de-energized cable by attaching the CT in the same orientation. The de-energized cable has been positively identified based on the needle deflection. We can perform the same test using the DAVR and CT. Notice with the DAVR, much like the STRCV, an audible tone and light is indicated on the correct cable. If we move to the middle or some location between both ends of the circuit, such as a manhole or hole dug in the ground, we can find the de-energized cable by attaching the CT in the same orientation. The sun was bright this day, so the white LED light wasn't quite visible with the angle I was holding the DAVR. The third demonstration, as seen from the wiring diagram, will include a single, de-energized primary conductor. This circuit requires the DCI-100, attached on the near end, to connect with the lifted concentric of the de-energized cable being tested. The far end is attached to ground using a feed-through bushing and a beer elbow ground assembly. With the batteries verified as good and the correct connections made with the DCI-100, we can turn on the DCI-100 and check or adjust the sensitivity on the ACDM receiver. Again, notice the arrow on the CT around the concentric and the word sender towards the DCI-100. We should expect the ACDM to indicate a green needle deflection. If we move to the middle or some location between both ends, such as a manhole or a ditch, we can find the de-energized cable by attaching the CT in the same orientation. The word sender is still pointed towards the DCI-100 and the word ground is still pointed towards the far end ground. The de-energized cable has been positively identified by the ACDM indicating a green needle deflection. The fourth and final demonstration, as seen from the wiring diagram, will involve two de-energized primary conductors. This circuit requires the DCI-100 to connect to the center conductors of both primary cables on the near end. Both connections will require feed-through bushings and the beer elbow adapter for the red and black DCI-100 conductors. On the far end, both de-energized primary conductors are tied together using a feed-through bushing. With the batteries verified as good and the correct connections made with the DCI-100, we can turn the DCI-100 on and verify all the circuit connections are good. If we move to the middle or some location between both ends, such as a manhole or a ditch, we can find the two de-energized cables by attaching the CT in the same orientation. 
Even though this circuit is not physically grounded, still point the word sender towards the DCI-100 so proper needle deflection is achieved. If we remember, from our near-in red and black DCI-100 conductor connections, the red conductor is attached to the primary conductor with blue tape, so the needle should indicate a green deflection. The black conductor is attached to the primary conductor with white tape, so the needle should indicate a red deflection. All other cables, energized or de-energized, should indicate no deflection in either direction. This concludes our DCI-100 instructional video. We hope that it was able to assist you in safely and properly at utilizing this unique identification tool to dramatically decrease time and effort in all of your de-energized identification needs. If you should have any additional questions or concerns, please let us know by calling 803-786-4839 or emailing us at customer underscore service at beerometers.com. Stay safe and have a great day.